on this special edition. It is amazing to think that they can go in and rob a store or a department store in broad daylight. Then they get away with it all the time. It's a new breed of burglar, and the emphasis is on diversion. The whole objective is to distract the employees in the store so that one or two people can make their way to like an office area or where the money is kept. We'll show you just how brazen they can be. They're good, they are. They're, they're smooth, they're good, and you don't even know what's going on. I did something that I had no right to do, morally or legally. School teacher Mary Letourneau is in jail paying for her crime. Now her teenage lover wants payback from the school. Could a new lawsuit turn these lovers against each other? Billy is having a hard time coping, and he's depressed, and he's confused, and he's not sure how this is all going to shake out and where he's going to fit in in life. And what surprises does Murray Letourneau have in store? Litigation often makes for strange good fellows. There's this whole unanswered uh, mystery just hanging over the household, and it stays there. 21 years ago, her son, Aton Pates, left home for school and was never seen again. Now, could there finally be a break in the case of Aton Pates? Now on Special Edition, from our MSNBC studios, here's Lori Dew. The classroom romance between teacher Mary Kay Letourneau and her teenage student, Vili Fulau, remains a national scandal. She is in prison for rape. He is trying to raise their two children. But there's a new twist to the story, the young father's demands. We begin with Mary Kay's confession. Here's David Gregory. I did something that I had no right to do, morally or legally. It was wrong, and I am sorry. I give you my word that it will not happen again. Please. Please. Help us. Help us. Help us all. We all know Mary Letourneau. When she began a sexual affair with a schoolboy, she crossed into forbidden territory and paid dearly for it. I led the relation. I made the first move. She said no a couple times. And we just and then after that, we just started talking a lot to each other. We started being friends a lot. Billy Fulau, a boy who thought he was a man, but the state of Washington thought otherwise. These mismatched lovers were brought together by passion. One barely old enough to understand illicit love, another too obsessed to stay away from. I felt that I very much needed the relationship. I also felt that he needed the relationship. We were kind of wondering who this teacher could be and could our child, you know, be involved in something like this? Could this ever happen to us? Greg Olson is a Seattle crime writer and author of a book on Mary Kay Letourneau, If Loving You is Wrong. You know, I was never really sure that I could really tell the story effectively until, uh, you know, very late in the game. I was almost probably halfway through the manuscript when I got a call from Mary Letourneau. Olson says the call came in July 1998 when it was announced that she was pregnant with her baby and that I had, you know, in pregnant behind bars, I wrote her a letter and said I was doing a book. And finally I got a call. I was, uh, you know, hunkering down, trying to figure out what I was going to do. And this little voice called me, Mary, you know, the call from prison. And we talked probably, while I was just finishing up the book, it was every night for several hours a night. I mean, she'd be on the phone, and I'd be asking her questions and correcting and, you know, getting a few quotes and things like that for the book. The conversations went on for weeks, six weeks, Olson says. Olson also claims he wasn't the only person Letourneau was speaking to from the prison payphone. Though forbidden to contact him, 
Olson says Mary was calling her student lover at a friend's house. Prison was a far cry from where their relationship began. Letourneau was the boy's second grade teacher. She encouraged his artistic ability over the years and taught him again in sixth grade. Billy spent a lot of time at the Letourneau home. Then, somehow, one night, their friendship took a turn to the taboo. Well, the truth is, at the time, I did have a crush on her. And I was out front with her, told her everything. Um, all my feelings I had about her. Um, and we just fell in love somehow. In 1997, Mary struggled to explain her feelings to Dateline's Margaret Larson. In my mind, he wasn't an age. Um, I think when we have close relationships with people, we value the relationship for completely outside of what's, what someone's age is. She said that he was a great warrior, that he was masterful and commanded her in every way that a man should command a woman, that she was uh, really uh, subservient to him, and she thought that role was natural for men and women. But Olson believes Mary was blinded by her obsession. Billy's a typical teenager. He's no more uh, special or different than any other kid in the class. He is a uh, he has some artistic talent, but uh, he's 16 years old and he thinks like a teenager and acts like one. According to Olson, Billy Fula was not the man Mary romanticized him to be. He says Mary wrote her young lover a letter threatening castration if he did not remain true to her. Although how the letter, along with others, reached the boy remains a mystery, it cost Mary four months in solitary confinement. She says they were never supposed to be sent out. She's, she, her story is that, you know, a cellmate found the letters and thought they would be worth something and sent them out. And there has been some of that. Some cellmates have, you know, traded on their friendship with Mary Letourneau to make money. A month after first speaking to Mary, Olson says he received another unexpected call a group of seven teachers, Letourneau's former colleagues, were ready to break their silence about the case. Olson claims he was stunned by what they told him. None of them had ever talked before, and they met seven of them at a public library in a little conference room, and they just unloaded. And what they told me pretty much shocked me. According to Greg Olson, Mary's fellow teachers at the Shorewood Elementary School told him they suspected an unusual relationship between Letourneau and the boy. After the fact, Olson says, they told him they regretted doing nothing, telling no one. They talked about uh, seeing them dance together, and one teacher actually went up to Mary and tapped her on the shoulder and said, you're getting too close to that kid, you better knock it off. People are talking. One teacher reportedly told Olson that the school's janitor met Mary as she was coming out of a bathroom late one night. Billy was inside the girls' bathroom, and Mary had made some sort of an excuse. Well, he's just having a hard time, and I need to help him out. One teacher talked about how uh, Mary was supposed to be in a staff meeting, and she left, said, I have to go take care of a student's needs. She was gone for 45 minutes, and when she came back, the teacher said she walked by me, and she smelled like sex. And she had been out in that van with Billy Fulau for 45 minutes, and the teacher said, you know, I thought just one second it flashed through my mind that maybe she was having sex in that van with that kid, but I couldn't believe it. I couldn't accept that Mary Kay Letourneau would be doing something like that. And why not? Olson believes it was because Letourneau, despite being diagnosed with a personality disorder, could be extremely persuasive, as he says he discovered in their many phone conversations. There's something about Mary. Uh, people uh, are fascinated by her and interested in her, and she knows that. She can convince you that, you know, maybe she does love this boy, and maybe he loves her, and maybe it's none of our damn business. And then you hang up the phone and you, you tell your wife or somebody who wasn't listening to her, hey, I'm thinking this now, and they'll say, boy, you're nuts. Olson's book is full of dark details about Mary's life before and during her affair with Billy. Olson says Mary told him her marriage to husband Steve Letourneau was failing. She was spending long afternoons and evenings at school with her student lover.
From the moment Mary's affair was discovered, her career and life were in ruins. Steve Letourneau has moved their children to Alaska. I know in my heart that she loves them. I know in my heart that uh, she used to be a different person. Amazingly, Olsen says the one thing Mary still counts on is a future with Billy. During Olsen's one prison visit with Letourneau, he says he asked her about the wedding band she wears. She said, it's, Billy and I are married. We got married on Mercer Island. Uh, you know, suburb of Seattle, and uh, had a ceremony that's been blessed. We're married. But you know, what she wants more than anything now, I'll tell you, is Billy to step forward and really marry her. I mean, Mary wants clemency, and she thinks the way she can get it is to have Billy Palau step up to the plate and say, I love this woman, she's the mother of my babies, and I want the court to allow me to marry her. Billy, now 16, is helping his mother care for his and Mary's two daughters. Last year, he cooperated with a French publisher who paid him $250,000 for his story, a book to which Mary also contributed. What I saw was, here's Mary's chapter about her love and how sensitive this boy is and how wonderful he is. And then his chapter was graphic. I mean, he was talking about all the places they did it. You know, and then we went over here and did it there, you know. Um, the two of those things together wasn't right. It didn't, it didn't come off, the, I think, the way anybody that was trying to win her any kind of sympathy would have wanted. But the lawyers did push for that. They did want that graphic sex element in there because they thought it would sell copies. But the final judgment about this school teacher's relationship with her student may best be summed up by Mary herself before she was sentenced in November 1997. It is true, it is real, and it was love, and it is love. Is it the kind of love, um, is there any space for that in our society? Maybe not. She shouldn't be punished for being loved. She'll never acknowledge that it was wrong. You know, if loving you is wrong, for her the answer is no. You know, loving him was the rightest thing she ever did. But is there something that could turn these lovers into adversaries? When Special Edition returns, how Billy is coping as a father and how he wants payback. Billy is having a hard time coping, and he's depressed, and he's confused, and he's not sure, you know, how this is all going to shake out and where he's going to fit in in life because, uh, you know, he was a dad at uh, 13 and uh, it's tough. You know, he doesn't go out and hang out with his friends as much as he used to. He, you know, he can't. He's got to stay home with these two little girls. Special Edition continues now with today's Snapshot in the News. Regis Philbin wants everyone to dress like a million. The host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire now has his own line of clothing called, appropriately enough, the Regis Collection. Regis says he'll have a hand in picking colors and he'll get a cut of every item sold. The company projects sales will be $50 million in the first year. Now once again, here's Lori Duke. She was the 30-something Seattle school teacher, and he was her teenage lover. If loving him was wrong, Mary Kay Letourneau didn't want to be right. Their union produced two children. But is there something that could now turn them against each other? The next chapter in this story could be played out in court. Here's Chris Jansing. I felt that I very much needed the relationship. I also felt that he needed the relationship. But there is no real relationship. Three years after that interview, Mary Kay Letourneau is halfway through a seven-year prison term. And Vili Fulau lives the day-in, day-out life of a single parent. At the age of 16, he stays home with his mother, taking care of two young daughters. Writer Greg Olson, the author of a book about their case, still keeps in touch with the Fulau family through their attorney. Vili is having a hard time coping, and he's depressed and he's confused, and he's not sure, you know, how this is all going to shake out and where he's going to fit in in life because, uh, you know, he was a dad at uh, 
13, and uh, it's tough. You know, he doesn't go out and hang out with his friends as much as he used to. He, you know, he can't. He's got to stay home with these two little girls. According to David Gerke, once Letourneau's lawyer and now a close friend, child care bills for the two little girls have been expensive. You can love them to death, but if you don't have money to clothe them and feed them, and when you've got two young ones, it's a horrible expense. Gerke says that to help meet the bills, the teenager and his mother are filing suit against the school district and the town of Des Moines, Washington. In a strange twist of fate, Vili Fulau and Mary Kay Letourneau could wind up on opposite sides of a bitter legal fight. The lawsuit charges that the school district failed in its duty to supervise and monitor Letourneau's activities. The Fulaus will have to prove that Mary Letourneau was a bad and irresponsible teacher. And according to David Gerke, who visited her behind bars days after the case was filed, Letourneau is very upset. She thinks it's somehow an, uh, an attack on the relationship, on the love uh, that her and Billy had for each other. She may take an unusual step from behind prison walls to save her relationship and her reputation. It does not uh, strike me as odd that Mary might end up siding with the school district. You know, litigation um, often makes for strange bedfellows in the context of interests aligning themselves. Patricia Buchanan is the attorney for the school district. She says the Fulaus have no reason to challenge Letourneau's competence. Performance evaluations were always superb, above average. There were no complaints about her. But what about the teacher's suspicions that she was having sex with a 12-year-old student? When Mary was first arrested, the district did do an investigation and it did speak with all of the teachers and asked back then in February of 97 and shortly thereafter, were you aware of anything? Did you see anything? And consistently the answer was no, the answer was no. A big difference from what Greg Olson says some of those teachers told him anonymously. They claimed to have spotted Fulau and Letourneau slow dancing together, spending time together in a school bathroom, and staying alone in her classroom as late as 10 o'clock at night. As far as the district is aware, there was never any slow dancing. As far as the district is aware, there was never any, um, I think you mentioned, a bathroom incident. Those things did not happen. But off school property, at a marina, someone spotted the boy with Letourneau parked in her van at 3 in the morning. At that point, the school district was informed and took action. They knew about the incident at the marina where they were caught Mary and Billy in the back of the van. They knew all of that. And if your child is caught in the back of a van with a teacher at 3 in the morning, I would want my school district to do something about it. Neither Fulau nor his mother would comment on camera. But in a printed statement, their attorney says the facts are largely undisputed and that a 12-year-old boy has been cheated of his youth and he and his mother have been saddled with the economic and emotional responsibilities of two children born of the illegal relationship. Although two books have already been written about the case, Mary Letourneau is now working on her own version, and a Seattle court has ruled that she'll be entitled to the royalties. She believes that there's a lot of Mary Kay Letourneau money out there available to her, that she will sell her story, to the highest bidder or to a book publisher, and she'll make money on her own. And I think she believes that. And her former lawyer says Letourneau still hopes she'll be back with Billy Fulau someday. If Mary didn't believe that there was going to be a storybook ending, can you imagine how it would be to be in prison? She knows that, that storybook ending is going to be there. That's how she survives. Don't ever count Mary Letourneau out. You'll see her in the news again. Um, maybe it'll be her wedding to Billy. These people are, you know, they're fed by this media and this attention, and they aren't going to stop. I mean, Letourneau lives. It is true, it is real, and it was love. The Seattle court also ruled that Letourneau may have unsupervised visits with her six children. That includes the two she had with Billy. Mary Letourneau's prison sentence, incidentally, ends in 2004. We'll be right back. In one of his alleged confessions, he told this cellmate, in fact, he drew a map 
Now, investigators took that map from that cellmate, brought it to an FBI lab, and a handwriting expert confirmed that the handwriting was Jose Ramos.